Perfect. So hello everyone, welcome to our webinar. Um, today we are going to have this webinar with BI in Norwegian Business School. My name is Karen Botero and I am pleased to be here um, hosting this webinar on representing Viva Mundo. And um, so before we get started, I would like to tell you that in Viva Mundo, we tell you all the information uh, you need to know to start the process of studying abroad. So we invite you to read all our articles um, and find all kinds of information about uh, international education. Um, do not miss this opportunity to uh, discover this uh, international education world. So today we are joined by Matthew, um, he is an academic representative of this prestigious institution, and we are, we also have like two uh, special guests today. We have Selena and Ian. Uh, they are international students at this institution, and they will be sharing with us um, their experience studying in Norway. So we really hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask on the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. And we will go back to them at the end of the presentation. Um, well, now I would like to extend a warm welcome to Matthew, uh, Selena, and Ian. Yes, thank you very much uh, for the introduction there, Karen. Um, we are excited to be here today. Uh, just to give a little bit of a more background about myself, I am a part of the international marketing and recruitment team here at BI Norwegian Business School. Uh, I'm originally from Canada, but I studied in Sweden and now I find myself living and working here in Oslo, Norway. So I know a little bit about what you're kind of experiencing right now with respects to deciding to choose to study abroad. Uh, it's an exciting time, but I also can relate to how many choices you have and how overwhelming sometimes all the options, the programs, the cities, all the decisions that go into making this big decision, um, all the steps you have to take to do it. So I really respect you all for even joining the webinar right now and starting to think about studying abroad because I know for myself, it's definitely been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done was choosing to, to study abroad. And I can honestly say that I would definitely not be living here in Norway right now if I did not study abroad in Sweden from Canada. So you never know where things are going to take you. Um, but that's just one of the things to think about and consider is that there's so many opportunities that open up for you when you do decide to study abroad. As Karen mentioned, uh, we are joined by two current students here at BI Norwegian Business School. We have Ian, he is a bachelor student. And then we also have Selena, she is a master student joining us. We will get to know them a little bit more uh, better later on in the presentation, but I wanted to introduce them now um, just so they feel welcome. We are all, we're all healed together and we're all working towards the same thing, sharing as much information as possible. Um, what I would like actually to request is maybe throw in the chat um, where you're joining from, uh, which city, because it'd be kind of cool to see where everybody is joining from. It gives us a better idea of where people are, are coming from and where their interest is coming from to study here in Norway. So here's the agenda for today. We're gonna to talk about why Norway. That's always a big question that a lot of students uh, get asked and ask us. Uh, we'll go into why BI. Uh, we'll look at the bachelor's programs. We'll look at the master's programs. We'll discuss a little bit of the practical information. Then we will get to meet Ian and Selena and hear about their journeys and their experiences here in Oslo, Norway. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll have time for a little bit of a Q&A um, and like Karen mentioned, if you do have questions throughout the presentation, throw them in the Q&A. And if it's an appropriate time to answer them, uh, I'll get to them right away, or we can save them for later on in the presentation. So let's get started. So why Norway? I'm sure Ian and Selena have had this question asked to them by their friends and their family. Um, and it's a good question, because why would you choose to come to Norway of all places to study? Well, first off, English comprehension here in Norway is extremely high. A lot of people don't realize that uh, pretty much all of Norwegians can speak English at a very uh, high level. 
and they're very comfortable speaking it as well. So if you understand English, you will not have a problem getting around here in Norway. You will be able to go to the stores and communicate with the salespeople, but also you will be able to integrate into society and meet some Norwegian people, make some friends. Um, so the English language is spoken throughout Norway and especially throughout the city of Oslo, the capital city of Norway. So do not, the language barrier is not a barrier when you come here to Norway as it might be in some other places because we have heard that sometimes language is a concern for students that study internationally. But if you have the English uh, comprehension and you have the understanding of English, then you will be able to survive and get around here and thrive here in Norway. Another, another one of the things that we speak about that is unique to the Scandinavian region, which includes Sweden uh, and Denmark and Norway, is the Scandinavian leadership model. Now, what that is, is that is a way for managers and leaders within organizations. It is a way for them to do empower their employees. And we talk about that about Norway because it is a little bit unique when compared to other countries, how organizations operate here. Um, so when you come to Norway as an employee or as a student, uh, your, your opinion matters. And at different levels, it, your opinion matters. So that is something that is kind of sprinkled throughout the programs here at BI Norwegian Business School, but it's also something that occurs all throughout Norway. Um, for myself, I know that work-life balance is such a big, a big reason why I decided to come to Scandinavia and ended up here in Norway. Uh, I know that coming from Canada, I worked a lot longer and I didn't get, I missed opportunities to, to hang out with my friends and family because of my working hours. Well, here in Norway, the work-life balance is a real priority for people. I can just share my own experience. I work about 32 hours a week. In comparison to Canada, I worked about 45 to 50 hours a week. So I've gained over 10 hours every single week for my hobbies, for my friends. And it, it has definitely changed my mental health and my physical health as well. So the work-life balance is another aspect of Norway that is a huge benefit when you get to come here and you get to experience it. And I have heard from international students as well that it does extend to the study life balance, but I cannot say for certain because I have not studied here in Norway, but maybe Selena and Ian, they can kind of share a little bit of their study life balance that they are experiencing while studying here in Norway. Now, the last thing that I will just touch on here is the equality in culture and workplace. We like to speak about this in Norway because the equality throughout the genders is something that is prevalent in the workplace, but also in culture. So we'll speak about the culture here first. Um, paternity leave for the fathers of children is a thing here that fathers do take and they are um, allocated enough and equal amount of time to spend with their children when they are born and they're going through those early stages of life. And now we know that that's not a, a common thing throughout the world. And we have seen here in Norway that it does impact not just the relationship that you have with your children and your spouse or your partner, but it also impacts the relationship you have with your job. And how that works is that women here, females, mothers, they are not having to choose between a family and a career. They are able to have both because of the, the generous offer of paternity leave here in Norway to include the fathers in the, in the upbringing of the children. So now women are being able to have their families, start their families, but they're also being able to choose that they want to continue their career. And that's important because research has shown that having women continue their career and not have kind of get uh, started and stopped because they're having children, that the profits of organizations actually increase between 12 and 15%. So having mothers in the workplace, as opposed to having to take on all the responsibility of raising the children, that has shown increases in profit here in Norway in organizations. So it's something we like to talk about in the equality, in the culture that also extends to the workplace. Now there's one other part of the equality that it does extend to as well. And that's in the classroom here in Norway and specifically here at BI Norwegian Business School. Because we are a tuition-based uh, institution, international students 
pay the same amount of tuition as the Norwegian students. Now that's important because we have heard from international students how uh, grateful they are for that because in other places around the world, international students can sometimes pay twice as much for tuition to study at an institution. So we like to have the equality extend to the classroom as well. And we've seen from international students, they kind of explain to us that it also makes more of a balance when it comes to the workload because both Norwegians and international students, they have an equal investment of money and time into their education. So the equality extends into the classroom as well. There are other options of Norway on the list here that you can't see, but we don't, we, if you have questions about them, you can definitely ask and I will definitely uh, have a look at those and have it get the answer. So the BI has a couple of campuses that offer uh, English programming, but the main one is here in Oslo. So why would you come study in Oslo? So you decided Norway, but why the city of Oslo? Well, it is the capital city of Norway. It is a European capital city. It is a big city, but it's not a big city feel. So there's about 700,000 uh, is the population of, of Oslo. And so you get that kind of cultural diversity because it is a capital city of Europe, but you're not getting kind of the gridlock of other capital cities in Europe, say a Paris or a London, uh, just as an example. So it is a big city with a small town feel. Um, and we've heard from international students that they really, really appreciate that because they are getting exposed to some people from their home countries and their home cultures, but they're also getting to experience other people from other cultures, especially throughout Europe and Asia and South America, but then they also get to experience Norwegian culture too. So it is prevalent here in Oslo. It is a very affordable student city. Um, as a student in Oslo, you do get access to a lot of discounts, student discounts, and you do get public transport uh, discounts as well, which is a big plus for students getting around Oslo because, and here is why, you can actually reach a lot of the, the pluses of living in Oslo and the pluses are the nature so the, the, the swimming options, the hiking options, in the winter, the skiing options, they are very accessible by public transport, whether it be a subway, a train, a tram, or a bus. So that is a very key for international students. As I kind of mentioned earlier about Norway, English is spoken widely throughout Oslo as well. It is very um, easy to get around here with just speaking English. I myself do not speak Norwegian yet, um, and I, I'm completely comfortable speaking English and people speaking English with me. It is not an uncomfortable situation. I haven't come across one yet, at least that's what I will say. There are a ton of green areas as well. So we have a ton of parks in the actual city of Oslo, but just a little further outside of the city center, there are a large amount of forest areas uh, natural lakes, rivers. There's actually a river that runs all the way from the top of, uh, of Oslo to the very bottom in the fjord right into the center. So it is a very cool walk that you can experience, but there is a ton of outdoor space to kind of get out and get away from the city life if you want to. But you can also experience that greenery area in the city as well, because there are so many parks around and green areas to get to. I see a lot of questions coming in. So let's see if we can answer. No, we'll wait till the end. Those ones, we'll wait till the end for those questions. So why BI Norwegian Business School? We like to say that you will get some fresh perspectives on business if you study here at BI Norwegian Business School. If you're gonna study in Norway, you might as well study at the number one business school in Norway. And that is BI Norwegian Business School. Um, we are triple crown accredited and that means we're the top 1% of business schools worldwide. That's key because that means that the curriculum in place has been reviewed and is constantly reviewed uh, every few years so that it is relevant to your work and your industry when you graduate. So it's, it's a plus to have a curriculum that is constantly evaluated and constantly updated to meet the current demands of the workforce. And we see that in a lot of our programs with the little tweaks that they do Every, so, every couple of years with the programs and with the courses. So you are getting a relevant education and that's because we are a part of that triple crown accreditation. 
We're also an affordable quality business education. So we'll talk about the tuition fees later on, but in terms of tuition fees compared to other institutions in other English speaking countries, we are extremely affordable. And like I mentioned, the Triple Crown accreditation gives us that quality business education that we're allowed, enabled to kind of deliver to our students. I know students are, are really big into the rankings, so we like to talk about them here briefly. Um, we're the number 49 ranked European Business School by Financial Times. And then a couple of our programs are ranked across the uh, various ranking systems out there. So if that is something that is interesting to you and something that is important to you, um, you can tab a look at some of the programs that we are ranked in uh, on some of the more popular ranking systems. But I will just like to mention that the accreditations is also something else that you should uh, keep in mind when you're looking at schools as well, because you do want, like I mentioned, that uh, current curriculum. You want something relevant for your studies. So when you do get out into the working world, you are able to have those updated skills and those updated knowledges to uh, take into your, your, your organization. Here at BI Norwegian Business School, it is quite an international environment. Um, we have more than 220 partner schools worldwide. So that kind of gives you an opportunity to do an exchange semester with one of our partners throughout the world. So if you want to add another international element to your studies, you, we do offer a, a huge range and a bunch of options for you to kind of take an exchange semester somewhere if you like. But that also means that there are exchange students that come into BI Norwegian Business School. So it actually increases the, the diversity in the population here as well, because from those 220 partner schools, we are receiving students as well. Um, on average, it's about 700 exchange students annually. Uh, that number is a little bit different in the last couple of years, just because of the situation uh, with coronavirus that's happening. But hopefully we, we hope to see an, a back, uh, another um, back, go back to that kind of amount of exchange students that we are seeing coming into BI Norwegian Business School because it's really a big benefit for you because it increases your opportunity to expand your professional network, but also your social network as well. So there's just another kind of plus to studying in an international environment. 30% uh, of our faculty are international and we are seeing an increase in the international administration staff. So people like myself who don't work with the program's curriculum so much or teach, but we are behind the scenes helping students uh, navigate their, their journeys here at BI, Norwegian Business School, but also navigate their, their journey here in Norway and in Oslo. And that's important because you are getting people like myself who have experience uh, living abroad. And so they understand what international students are going through and they have kind of have, a, you have a voice behind the scenes is the best way to put it, because there are some international flavor behind the scenes and within the faculty as well. Now, this is an important slide because if you're studying, you want to be able to see some results from your studies. So in the past year, we saw 80% of our international students finding a job within six months of graduating. So that is a extremely high number, especially coming off of, well, not coming off of, especially navigating the corona pandemic that we're currently in. The fact that 80% of our international students found a job within six months in this tough economy right now and tough workforce around the world, uh, it's a very proud number that we are happy to relay to uh, interested students. But then the interesting number here is that 60% of our international students found work here in Norway. So they actually stayed in Norway. And so that kind of is just another example that uh, having the English language comprehension, these students were able to find work without having to speak Norwegian. Now, some of them do learn Norwegian in a short period of time, and we definitely encourage people to do that. However, they did not have to learn Norwegian to get some of these jobs that they did work with. Uh, whether it be in the finance industry, whether it be in marketing or in HR. So you are seeing, we are seeing a lot of international students actually sticking around here in Norway. So when you kind of think about where you want to study and if Norway is a place that you have decided maybe you do want to study, maybe take a, a second to think, do you want to stay in Norway? Because as Selena and Ian will probably attest to, they have started meeting people that uh, have become maybe close close friends, maybe they're meeting people in their professional network. 
So that actually gets more difficult to leave these people after you do study and you do graduate just because um, you are kind of making a life here depending on what, uh, what you wanna do. So that's just something to keep in mind. And at the bottom of the screen, those are just some of the average salaries uh, that we have seen from our students in the past year. So the bachelor students, they had a very high uh, salary, which is excellent. And the master students, they had an excellent salary as well, just not as high as previous years. Again, uh, I think the corona pandemic has played into a lot of uh, the salaries that we are seeing the students come out of um, from their working world. So now we switch our focus to some of the programs. I'm just gonna take a quick look at the questions here to see um, if anything is relevant. So one of the questions is, are there employment opportunities after graduation? So what I will say is that, um, yes, there are. And I think the last slide kind of gives an example of, of what those opportunities are uh, because the programs are so diverse here at BI Norwegian Business School, they, uh, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what the, their jobs are getting. I can speak from experience. We had uh, four students, uh, international students work with me in my department and all four, four of them secured jobs here in Norway. Uh, two of them are working in the finance and the banking, banking industry. Uh, one of them is working in the marketing industry here in Oslo. And then another one has moved to another city in the south of Norway. And uh, she is also working in the finance industry with investments. So um, they all took those programs and they have been able to find jobs. So hopefully that answers your question. If you have more specific questions about programs, I can definitely hopefully try to relay some more of those. So we'll just briefly touch on some of the programs that we do offer. We have three bachelor degree programs and they are all three year programs. Uh, one is the internationally recognized business administration or better known as the BBA. And in that program, you will get a broad management knowledge in business, but then you also get to choose a specialization uh, in one of those three fields, whether it be shipping management, finance, and international business. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, Ian uh, is actually taking the business administration program, so maybe he can kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, but we do have a data science program as well. That one used to be called the business analytics program. And we have a new program. It's called digital business. And that one is dealing with cloud services, how, how organizations are moving everything to digital uh, architecture. So with the cloud services, with the software programming, how organizations are using, as we see right now, we are having this discussion over Zoom and digital business is now occurring on Zoom, on Microsoft Teams, on Google Hangouts. So it's a lot of, um, a lot of these uh, software programs are being implemented. And so that program is looking at that as well. We'll just touch briefly on the, the admission uh, requirements for the bachelor programs. If you have an IB diploma, that is one way to get into the bachelor programs. Or if you are from a specific country, uh, each country has specific requirements. I have just put Mexico on there just as an example. Um, so for that one is the Certificado de Bachillerado. I hope I said that right. Uh, I don't speak Spanish, so I hope I was able to kind of get that one out. Um, plus one year university education. Um, what that means is that you have to have a pathway program um, and we do offer that here, um, or you have to have one year of university from any university in the world. Uh, but we suggest that students take our, our pathway program located in Sweden, um, because then you get a guaranteed admission into the bachelor program in BI if you do pass every uh, course in the pathway program in Sweden. Uh, for other countries, there is a list of certain uh, requirements that you have to make. Um, so if you do have specific questions about that, we can definitely go over that, or you can reach out to me later on, and we can discuss uh, which country you're coming from and maybe look at the different um, requirements that you, that you do need. But for the most part, it is basically a high school diploma plus one year university education, unless you have taken the IB diploma. We do require an English a certificate so we can have that in the IELTS or the TOEFL um, but then you also have to do write a motivation letter and describe why you want to study here uh, in Norway and specifically at BI Norwegian Business School and just the last thing that I will mention about the bachelor admission is the financial plan we have a financial plan document that uh, 
you have to fill out and all students that study in Norway have to fill one of these out. And it's just a way for the Norwegian government to determine that you will be able to finance your stay and your studies here in Norway. Um, it's nothing to be afraid of this document. It's a standard document um, and it's very easy to fill out. We have a template on our website, um, but it is something that is required to study here in Norway as an international student. So I kind of mentioned the, the pathway program briefly, and that qualifies students from certain countries that have to fulfill that one year of university education alongside their, their high school diploma um, in order to study here at BI. And uh, Ian has taken this program, so he will touch a little bit about it, touch a little bit on it uh, later on, um, but he has taken it. So we have an, uh, an agreement with the uh, Jönköping University in Sweden and it's basically a, a way for students to kind of get up to speed on Scandinavian culture, maybe uh, improve their English a uh, little bit if they don't meet the English requirements, but it's also uh, enabling you to kind of be better prepared to come into some of the um, financial or the mathematics uh, programs here at BI and the courses. So uh, if you do have to take that pathway program, it is a good way to kind of get you prepared to eventually come to BI Norwegian Business School and then complete your bachelor degree here at BI. Switching over to the master's programs, uh, you can see on the screen all the master's programs that we do offer. Uh, I'll talk about the master's of science in business on the right hand side of the screen. So in that program, that is a general management uh, degree at the master's level. But also you have the opportunity to uh, specialize and take a major in one of those specific subjects. So the benefit of that program is that you get a broad general knowledge of management and how organizations uh, operate in the business world. But then you also get to specialize in one of these uh, specific mass, uh, majors. Um, we, we see a lot of students uh, are interested in supply chain management uh, major, and that is because uh, supply chain is a huge deal around the world. Um, as you've probably noticed, or you've heard or seen articles, the supply chain around the world has taken a hit because of Corona, but then also because of that, uh, that ship that got stuck in the canal. So it is an interesting, but it is a very important field of study. So we have seen a lot of students kind of gravitate towards that major. That one also has opportunities at our Bergen campus, um, which is on the west coast of Norway. It's a beautiful city that gives students a little bit of a, a different uh, perspective than studying in the capital city here in Oslo. Um, but on the left-hand side, we have our degree programs. And so we have a, a kind of a nice broad scope of programs, whether it be in finance or we have marketing or we have um, HR, which is kind of our leadership and organizational psychology. So you do have an opportunity to kind of uh, have a little bit more specific knowledge in those programs, in those fields. And one of the programs I just kind of want to highlight is the sustainable finance one. That one is becoming a newer, it's a newer program, but it's taking a look at how financial investments should start to look at sustainability as one of the reasons on why the, the, the world and climate change needs to look at sustainable investments as a way to uh, better the world for people and for profits and then also just to keep the world healthy. So it is kind of an interesting program. And then I'll just touch on the last two programs on that list, digital communication management and data science for business. Those are our two newest programs that will be offered starting in 2022. Uh, I'm sure everybody here knows that data science is an emerging field of expertise. Data is everywhere. Um, so that is something that is a very pop going to be a very popular uh, for employers to find people with those skills. And I actually will just mention that all of our master's programs kind of take the analytics port, uh, aspect of data into consideration. So whatever, whichever program you do decide to study, you are going to be exposed a little bit to some programming language and some analytics and some data analysis because the business world is changing to automation and digitization. And those are going to become very important moving forward. As we look at the admission requirements for the master's level, they are a little bit more difficult than at the bachelor's, bachelor level. So we do require a 3.5 on the ECTS scale, 
as your GPA to get into a master's program. And each program does have specific admission requirements. Uh, sometimes you have to have a certain uh, uh, mark coming from say a mathematics uh, course or a statistics course, but each program on our website uh, talks about what specific admission requirements you do have to meet. We do require a GMAT or a GRE result, um, but that is not required for partner schools. So if you are currently studying as a bachelor student, uh, as an example, at Tech de Monterrey in Mexico or University uh, de los Andes in Colombia, uh, those are partner schools here with BI, so you do not have to take a GMAT um, because you are studying at a partner school. And we do have our partner list of institutions online. So if you are studying or you are uh, curious to see if you are studying at one of our partner schools, you can check, out, check that out online. But that is a nice benefit to studying at a partner school. We do require a little bit higher of an English uh, result, an IELTS of 6.5 and a TOEFL of a 90. Now this one, you do have to supply your copies of your transcripts and your degrees. And uh, one thing to know here is that they have to be certified by a certified translator. So they have to be translated into English by a certified translator. And they have to be, uh, true copies have to be made and certified as well. And then you just upload those into the application portal. As, as uh, the same as the bachelor level, you have to write a motivation letter and then provide that financial plan document that I talked about earlier. I will highlight the important deadlines that we have for studying here at BI Norwegian Business School. The application portal is now open, so you are able to apply for our programs. Uh, we have a priority application deadline of March 1st. Uh, so if you are considering con studying here, uh, it is a good idea to kind of get your, your application in by that March 1st deadline because uh, seats will start to fill up and it just gets harder and harder to kind of plan a big move and move into a new country if you leave it a little bit later. However, if you are um, still needing some more time to think about studying abroad, you can still apply after March 1st. We just look at those applications as they come in on a rolling basis. So the timeline of when you would hear an answer, it, uh, it is hard to determine after March 1st when you will receive an answer or a decision or receive an offer. Uh, we do have a housing application deadline of May 1st. And that's because all international students are guaranteed housing here at BI when they study. Let's just take a quick look at the tuition. I'm not gonna get into too much detail, but what I will mention here is two things. One, uh, the comparison between other English destinations to study English programming. Uh, we do find that we are very competitive in that field and we are very affordable. So if you are thinking about studying internationally, that is something obviously finances is a very important factor of that. So it's something to take into consideration. And then the other thing I will mention on this slide is just the budget aspect of living here in Norway as a student. So this is kind of the average that we have budgeted out uh, based on what we've heard from previous international students over the years. Uh, you can expect to pay about 14,000 US dollars um, to live here for one year in Oslo. But that includes your housing, your entertainment, and your books, um, so, and your food as well. So that, uh, that is kind of what we estimate an average international student will spend on a yearly basis. Some of the practical information, guaranteed housing for international students. So get that application in before May 1st, because it is a very big relief to have housing once you do land here in Oslo, you have a place to sleep on that very first night. Uh, there is no application fee, so you do not have to pay to apply to BI Norwegian Business School. So that's a very nice feature. Uh, you can apply and see if you get an offer and then compare it to other, other offers that you may receive. Uh, international students can work while they are studying here. It's up to 20 hours per week. Uh, so we do see a lot of international students do get part-time jobs. Uh, in the service industry, whether it be at hotels, um, at restaurants, at bars, uh, but we also see students, international students get jobs in the retail industry. So working at H&M or at uh, any of the, the main ones, Zara as well. So you, you don't have to speak Norwegian to get a part-time job. And we do find that international students do get part-time jobs here in Oslo. You are covered 
by the Norwegian National Health Insurance while you are st uh, studying here at, uh, in Norway. Um, you just have to make sure that uh, you have your study permit and then you will be able to be covered as a student while you're here. But we do recommend that you get travel insurance when you do um, come to Norway because you won't be covered until you are physically in Norway. And then you also have to have travel insurance if you do decide to take a couple of weekend trips somewhere else in Europe, um, you have to have some travel insurance because you will not be covered outside of Norway. This is an important website if you are interested in studying and applying for the study permit, uh, udi.no. Uh, I'm sure Ian and Selena are familiar with this website and filling out the forms. Um, it is quite a, a simple process um, to fill out for the permit, um, but right, it depends on when you fill it out, when you will receive an answer. But that's enough for me. Uh, the, this is a, the exciting part. We get to kind of hear from some of the, the current students that are studying here um, at BI Norwegian Business School. So I will turn it over to uh, Ian and Selena. Um, so uh, we can start with uh, Ian. So Ian, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian Cineros Villegas. I am an um, international student from Mexico. Currently, I'm enrolled in BI, studying the Business Analytics program. And well, um, I'm going to share my experience today. And first of all, I would like to mention uh, why did I choose Norway? And one of the main reasons why I choose Norway is uh, high quality education. The, the, um, the country offers uh, as a whole. Also, I chose Norway because Norway is a really equ uh, equal society. Uh, when I was doing my research, I found equality is an important value here. So once I got here, it's really reflected when you meet people, when you need help, when you ask for help, people will always help you and you feel like you're living in a really equalitarian society. Uh, this was a very important point I considered because I thought before coming to Norway, if I want to go abroad, I want to feel safe in the new environment I will be. So also I consider um, that Norway is a really safe society. Since I'm here, I haven't feel uh, in danger or something. I've, I've been feel safe most of the times here with no problems. So those aspects were really important before making my decision. Then if I'm honest, first I chose BI and then I chose Norway because Norway, uh, BI got my attention because as Matthew mentioned, uh, BI is a triple crown accredited business school, which reflects the quality of the education they offer. And also it means that the education will be valid worldwide. Uh, this made me feel secure, safe about the investment my parents were going to make, which was a really important point. And another reason, and probably the most important reason uh, why I chose BI is the program I'm currently studying, which is a program of business analytics. Uh, before starting the university, I made my research to check uh, programs, what I wanted to study, and I found that BI has a really good program called Business Analytics, which combines data science with the business field. So this program re really caught my attention, and it's then when I decided I wanted to study at BI. And then I said, well, BI is a great university with a great program. And then I said, Norway also is a great country, so, so why not? Why don't come to Norway and study at BI? But however, when I was checking the, the requirements for studying at BI, I realized I didn't have the necessary uh, requirements because as Matthew mentioned, each country has uh, different uh, requirements. So in my case, I needed one year of extra education. And this year of extra education was fulfilled with the Hadwick program that BI offered me in collaboration with Yonchpin University. This program helped me to develop and improve my English skills and also uh, in some other subjects such as maths and helped me to get into the Scandinavian educational system, which was really nice. Also really good uh, important point about the Hadwick program is that I made a lot of international friends. It was my international, it was my first international experience so when I, when I arrived uh, the first day, I remember seeing people from all over the world. It was so amazing because I learned from many cultures. I learned about uh, different languages. So now I have friends from all over the world. And most of them, most of my friends are studying with me now at BI, which was uh, really nice because when I arrived to Norway, I already arrived with friends. So I didn't feel alone 
in Norway when I first arrived. Then um, before uh, considering going abroad or, or going to Norway, I had some questions about how is life as a bachelor student there. And I have to say that life as a bachelor student here is really balanced. You have time for your studies. At the same time, you have time for hanging out with your friends or for work if you want to do it. Of course, always it is important to keep on on your responsibilities and handing the assignments on time always. But if you want to have a, perf a, a social life, you can have it perfectly. A good aspect about BI is that you can join different associations while you study there. So you can make friends from different majors. Uh, you have activities with them. You can join sport clubs and many other things that makes the environment feel so good as a student at BI. Also, before moving to Norway, I remember to wonder about the, how it's living in Oslo. And well, in my experience, living in Oslo is great. You can find everything you want. There are a lot of museums, restaurants from all over the world. It's a really international and vibrant city. And if I'm honest, one of my major concerts before moving to Norway were like the living expenses here. And now that I'm here, I can say, yes, uh, Norway, uh, Oslo, it's an uh, expensive city, but nothing a well-planned budget can fix, at least in my experience. Uh, if you plan your budget, you can perfectly uh, make it as a student. Also here in Norway, there are a lot of discounts for students. Uh, there is an association called SIO. Uh, where they have really good discounts uh, in gym memberships and restaurants and everything. So that's really good for students. And also if you're planning to, to look for a job, uh, as I mentioned before, Oslo is a really international city. So many employers look for international um, uh, employees. So actually, uh, that's my case. I'm working right now. Uh, I have been here for two months and I already got a job at a Mexican restaurant, uh, which is really nice because like it, it helps in my budget. And at the same time, it helped me to, to improve my, my Norwegian. So, so far that has been my experience as a student at PI and uh, my experience at the Padway program. So as you can see in the slides, those are some uh, pictures about Oslo, about my experience with my, my international friends in the Padway program, uh, some pictures about uh, BI. So yes, uh, thank you for listening to me. And now I will handle to Selena. Thank you, Ian. Um, oh, yes, perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Selena. I'm Mexican, and I'm a full uh, master's student at BI for the master in accounting and business control. And I will tell you a little bit about my experience today. And uh, to start, why Norway? Well, I chose Norway because I always had the dream of pursuing a master's degree in Europe. And after doing some research on some countries, I became very interested in Norway, especially for this mindset about um, sustainability, human rights, and quality of life. Also, I got interest for its landscapes, the safety, and the technology. Everything seemed to be so different than what I was used to that I decided to come here and challenge myself in every possible aspect. The weather, the language, the culture, uh, living alone, the studies themselves, and so on. And um, what I like the most about being here is having the possibility to learn, discover new things, and live differently every single day. I remember that in Mexico, I, I was very comfortable with my job and my lifestyle, but I already know what was going to happen in my life for the next two or three years. And I remember thinking about this and saying to myself, this is okay, but I want more. I want to take risks and I want to explore possibilities. So here I am. Um, but of course, the final decision to come here was not only uh, driven by the country, but also by the, by the school. So um, why BI? I chose BI because I wanted to enrich my bachelor in finance with some other discipline in the business field. I evaluated some, some programs and the master in accounting and business control at BI was what I was looking for. Um, I can say that it's a very complete program because it integrates areas such as taxes, management control, treasury, even data analytics with programming, which is really needed today. Uh, also the master will provide me with the knowledge and skills that I need to get an accreditation called CIMA, which is globally recognized 
and I'm sure I will have better opportunities in the job market um, after graduation. Of course, I also selected BI because it's a school um, that is supported by important accreditations and outstanding uh, rankings, which, which is really crucial when you are evaluating where to study. And I will talk about how is the master student life, let's say. Well, in general, the full load is five courses and there are um, one or two classes per course per week. And the remaining time uh, I use it to read, to self-study, to work on group assignments, um, do exercises to practice and so on. It's also recommended to prepare in advance for the lectures. So you can read some materials, you can watch some videos, go through the slides in advance. And I, I can say that uh, all the topics in this semester were completely new to me. And you can also expect challenging, but also very interesting courses in different formats. For example, some classes are more numerical or theoretical, while in some others you can interact more and have more discussions. For example, this semester I, I have ethics. Um, but of course, as Ian also mentioned, there is more than just studies. As a master's student, you can join also different associations according to your interests, and also you have access to many, many social and professional events. Um, about the international environment in BI and in general in Oslo, I can say we are a lot of international people here. I have met people from places that I never imagined. Uh, for example, I have friends now from Kazakhstan, Romania, Albania, Serbia, even from Nepal. And I can say the cultural exchange is very diverse and enriching. It's very interesting to learn about the, the, their culture and realize that there are very big differences um, between us, but also surprising similarities. Um, what I can say about Oslo, Oslo I think may be the perfect city because it's not that big, it's not that small. So there are plenty of activities to do. You will never, never get bored here. And it's also well connected to any other place in Norway and in general with Europe. And what I like the most is that I'm living in a city, which is at the same time full of nature. Um, there are parks, rivers, trees everywhere. I mean, inside the city. And I'm sure you will notice, if you, if you decide to come here, you will notice the fresh air as soon as you arrive. And additionally, um, it's, a, it's a city where you can experience the four seasons of the year. For example, in the summer, you have this amazing sun and everything is so green. And in the autumn, the colors of the trees are just spectacular, I would say. But in winter, you have snow, you can ski. There are also low temperatures. And for example, in Mexico, we don't have, we don't have this. It's pretty flat, the weather um, through the years. So yeah, we, we, we don't have this. So I'm, I'm living like a dream here. And I can say about the challenges. Um, my biggest challenge so far has been time management because as there are many, many uh, things to do here, when I arrived, I wanted to do like everything. I wanted to go to all the events and all the parties and go to the gym and, and do everything. But you know, time and energy are limited. So I had to establish priorities and try to set a timetable so in which I could enjoy a little bit of everything while keeping a balance. Yeah, so that's, that's my experience. I don't know if you have any questions. No, that's, uh, that's fantastic, Selena. I do see that we do have some questions in, in the, um, in the, the Q&A, so we can go through those. But I just want to say thank you to both of you for sharing your experiences because you both have different experiences. But it's really nice to hear that you're you're both having a good time so far here and you're not worried about the winter coming up. So that's great to hear. <laughs> but uh, how about we go through some of the I noticed I noticed in some of the questions we actually have touched on some of the stuff. So um, maybe you kind of just touched on the challenges, Selena. Um, that you were experiencing. So maybe this is a question to both of you. What do you think is the most difficult thing about being an international student? Oh, that's a good question. Mm, I don't know. Actually, I, I don't know. I, about international uh, 
you can yeah. Can I, can I take it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least in my experience, one of the most difficult parts was to adapt myself to the new educational system because it's a uh, uh, different system from what I, what, I, what I was used to because here's a little bit more about self-studies. Uh, so I wasn't adapted to that, but uh, during the pathway program, they helped me with that. So I arrived uh, to Norway prepared for that. At least that was one of my major uh, challenges. I see a question about uh, marketing related programs. Uh, we do offer a couple of marketing programs here. We have the uh, strategic marketing management uh, program. And then we also have the dual degree program, uh, BI Luis marketing program. And that is where you will study one year here in Oslo and then one year in Rome. So you get a double degree from both institutions in the marketing uh, field. And the strategic marketing management program uh, is very about uh, learning how the consumer behavior uh, impacts decision making from the consumer aspect and how you kind of build uh, strategies and marketing plans around consumer behavior and psychology. So it's a very strategic look at new ways of marketing in the digital platforms, because that is now the most prominent way people are marketing. But then it also touches on a little bit of the more traditional marketing platforms as well, whether it be through traditional media. Um, but uh, so that program does give you kind of a, a down, an overview and a way to kind of strategize marketing plans moving forward. Um, so let's see. Oh, here's a question for both of you. How many hours do you normally study per week? Uh, well, um, in my case, it, it depends because uh, per, per week, uh, right now we have uh, two lectures uh, or one lecture uh, per class, depending on, on, on the subject, but we have to use a lot of time on self-studies. So probably on self-studies, I can take uh, 20 hours per week plus, plus the classes. So yeah, it's, it's a mix of, of it. It also, it depends on what are you studying. But in my program, I can say I can I take around twenty hours uh, for self studies and probably um, twenty hours in classes, something like that, per week. Yeah, I, I would say the same. Like including classes for me, I would say maybe between six and seven uh, hours per day, including classes, of course. Uh, here's an interesting one. Why would you recommend studying at BI? I'm assuming that question was for the the the, the students. Um, so uh, we'll let them answer. So maybe we'll start with you, Selena. Why would you recommend studying at BI? Uh, I would recommend BI for the quality and education they have. Um, as, I, as I told, they are really supported by these accreditations and outstanding rankings. You have also many, many possibilities um and i i really enjoy being here it's not only like the the academic part part it's only it's also the social the the social uh, part i i will say that for example um every tuesday and thursday we have some uh, hot chocolate and coffee for free in the in the bar of the school i really enjoy i mean you can go there uh, with some friends or you can go along and, and meet new people so all these events like social ones are, are amazing i'm really really happy to to study here yeah in my case yeah i, I consider the same as selena it's not just uh the high quality education bi offers but it's also like the international environment you can feel in in the building you know uh as i mentioned before i have Many uh, I have a lot of friends from different parts of the world, uh, which allow me to have a better network and to, to know a little bit more about everything, you know. So that's what I really liked about BI, the, the international environment you can feel there. And also, of course, uh, high quality education and the good professors I have. Great. Uh, there's a question about visa and accommodation advice. So I'll talk about the, the visa. Um, it's a study permit that you have to apply for. Um, and you have to renew it um, each year, um, but it is incumbent on having an offer from, from BI in order for you to apply for the study permit. 
Um, but in terms of your question about will you get advice, uh, yes, we can help you through most part of the, the, the procedure. However, it is ultimately up to you to do everything. But if you have questions about um, the process, we can definitely help you with those. Um, in terms of the accommodation advice, my advice would be to sign up for the student housing that uh, is available for international students um, because it is guaranteed. And also it is subsidized by the Norwegian government. So it is significantly cheaper than if you were to uh, live on your own in an apartment elsewhere here in Oslo. Um, also on top of that, it is very difficult to find housing, uh, affordable housing in Oslo um, if you were not a student and you're not uh, working full time. So it is very difficult. So take advantage of the student housing. Um, we also touched on the living costs and Ian brought up a great point that if you do set yourself a budget, uh, you can make it work here as a student in Oslo um, because we don't we don't want to lie. It is an expensive city to live in and Norway is an expensive country, but the, the budgeting does come into play and you are able to make it work. And it sounds like Selena and Ian, you both have kind of made it work and you found something that's worked for you. So it is doable, I think is the best thing to take away um, from that one. Um, we do have a question about the COVID vaccine. And the question was, will I need my COVID vaccine on arrival? Um, as of right now, in order to get into Norway, you do have to document uh, the vaccine, that you do have the vaccine or that you have had coronavirus and recovered from it uh, within the last six months. So there is, um, you do have to provide some sort of documentation that you are protected from uh, coronavirus in order to, to get into Norway right now. Uh, I can't tell you what will happen in the future, but that is just something that uh, is currently happening right now um, with regards to the vaccine and coronavirus entering Norway. There is a question about offering financing alternative, alternatives for master's degree programs. Uh, we do have scholarships here uh, at BI. Um, they're extremely competitive and they are awarded to probably the, the highest academic earners in each of um, the levels, whether it be bachelor or master. Uh, Selena and Ian, you both have received scholarships. So you both won scholarships because you were high academic uh, students coming into BI. So there is that alternative. Um, in terms of student loans, we do not offer student loans from BI and Norway does not to international students. So you would have to secure student loans um, through your home country or through another method if that was what you were looking for. But then uh, Ian mentioned a great point, like he's only been here in Norway and he's already found a part-time job. So that is kind of another way for students to finance their studies. And like I kind of mentioned that uh, international students do find part-time jobs here. You just have to kind of go out there and get it. Um, if you come next year, maybe Ian can uh, hook you up with uh, some advice on, on getting a job in a restaurant. So uh, there is alternatives and there is ways to kind of uh, budget and help the finance aspect of it. But here's a question for you, Selena and Ian. Uh, how were you affected by the pandemic as international students? To be honest, I don't feel there is a pandemic here in Norway. I mean, when I arrived, I was so shocked because like, it was normal life here. And I, I, come, I came uh, from Mexico where everyone was using masks and everything. And then I was like surprised here. It, it was really normal. So of course there were some restrictions, but I, I can say that I feel free here. So I don't feel that the, the pandemic has affected my life in some way here. Not at uh, all. Well, in, in my uh, experience uh, that I studied Papio program last year in Sweden, uh, at that time, Sweden had like really open um, rules. Like they didn't have that many rules. So like my student life was not that affected. Yeah, the only problem is that probably the social life was a little bit restricted as in many other countries. But like in an academical um, point of view, everything was, was okay. And right now in Norway, as Selena mentioned, everything it's open basically everything is normal we go to classes uh i don't know i, I haven't faced uh or i haven't been affected by the pandemic uh this year at least or, or last year so yeah everything's perfect now here 
And then we have one final question, which I think is a great question. Um, how has the experience impacted your life and what are your plans for the future as international students? It's a hard question, but it's a, it's a good question, I think. Um, yeah, you want to answer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can start. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, this experience, this international experience has affected my life or impacted my life in different ways. Probably the most important one is that uh now i'm i'm like uh in a more inter i mean in a more international environment like i feel confident to talk to people from other countries i have a better network right now and if i have to mention more aspects about how it has uh, impacted my life i have to say that the international experience is at least in my opinion is something you cannot have in your country uh, so if you really want to leave something like, like really international, you should go bro, definitely. And BI is a good option. And my plans for the future, if I, if I'm honest, I'm not pretty sure about them yet. Still a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. Basically that. Yeah. For, for me, it's the same. This is experience that have changed completely my life and uh, that for sure I will remember for the rest of my life. Um, about my plans, uh, actually, I'm not sure yet. I I can say that I would like to stay here, but um, I haven't defined it yet. Let's let's say, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult question, um, but yeah, lots of opportunities I think coming both of your both of your ways, and then anybody who studies internationally, it does it does open up a lot of opportunities for people and whether it be social or professional. But that uh, that looks like that's all of the questions and our time as well. So I just wanted to briefly say thank you to everybody for joining and for participating and asking questions. Uh, I know that there's so many options out there for studying internationally. So I really appreciate you taking the time and showing the interest in studying here in Norway and at BI Norwegian Business School because there are so many options. And so we're really thankful that you have thought of us in some way. If you do have any further questions or you want to reach out to me, uh, just send an email to info at bi.no and we'll be able to connect through that, through that email and I'll be able to help you answer any further questions. Um, and we also have some social media stuff that you can follow us on. Uh, I will say that the student life at BI Instagram is probably the best of those four. So if you want to pick one of those four to follow, the student life at BI Instagram is, is the best because it's an Instagram um, run by current internet, current students here at uh, BI. So it's a cool look at uh, what it's like to study here. But that's all from me, Karen. I'm not sure if you have anything else for us. And not really, as you say, that will be the end of this webinar. So we invite all the people registered to this webinar and all the people who are watching us in our Facebook Live uh, to visit the BI Norwegian Business School website, of course, and to get in contact with you uh, if you are interested um, in get even more information about the studies in Norway. So um, thank you very much, Matthew, for your presentation. It was uh, really useful for all the people um, who are watching us. Um, thank you very much, uh, Selena and Ian, for sharing your experience. I think uh, it's a really good way to, to get, like, and um, to give advice to future international students. Thank you to all the attendees for listening, and I hope to, and see you in a future uh, opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.